me personally, I, I, there was a few times where I thought, this isn't going to happen, it's just yeah. too difficult. Yeah. Our family were like, no, you, you are crazy, <laughs> why are you just going like this, just catch a flight, you know. Yeah, and then, um, and I'm saving up for the cycle, so I don't want to be spending £15 a day in the gym. Yeah. So, yeah, point that's all just... Um, you have got a death wish, all this sort of negativity, so it dawns on you, you know, you're taking time out for three months and you're going to be cycling, are we undermining this challenge? It was the last week leading up to it, but it was like, sort of having dreams in that. Okay. The cycle, because it was just on my mind. All right. So before the cycle, how was your training? So the training wasn't consistent. I never managed to actually implement a routine. Um, it's quite difficult when you're working full time, trying to plan for the Hajj itself, trying to plan for yourself being away for three months, away from your family, away from paying the overheads. So you're working to financially be able to um, go for the Hajj as well as be away for three months. So yeah. it was a constant juggle trying to fit your training in. Um, I wasn't, my training consisted mostly of indoor cycling. I tried to go out once a week um, get some outdoor mileage and or saddle time as you can see that i'd probably remain consistent in that maybe four five six weeks and then i'd, I'd lose that routine again i'm busy again at the weekends um so other than that i would try and do at least two to three sessions a week on the exercise bike in the house um, and the training I would do on the exercise bike would be high resistance for about an hour. I'd try and get an hour minimum for high resistance and through that, throughout that hour I would set myself up sprints uh, in that hour. Uh, I would probably do like six, seven sprints at two to three minutes each, six to seven minutes apart. And I found that that really conditioned my legs um, massively. Um, if I had missed out going cycling outdoors for around eight weeks. And when I did go outdoors, the indoor training on the exercise bike with the high resistance, I pushed up my power outage phenomenally outdoors. My average speeds were way more than my previous cycle outdoors. Um, so alhamdulillah it worked, uh, the conditioning is really good uh, and now yesterday and the day before, day one, day two, alhamdulillah I was comfortable on the bike um, and we've done quite a bit of elevation as well. Yeah. But apart from that, the routine was, it was difficult to keep it consistent. What about yourself? Aye, so for me it was quite difficult to stay consistent. Yeah. Because um, I travel a lot with the job. Yeah. And every two weeks I'm traveling and then I'm back in Germany. So it's quite difficult to get a routine and keep the routine. <laughs> oh. So it's yeah. like I'll start a routine for two weeks, I'll be solid. Then I come back or I move away and I'm, it takes me like another week or so to like implement yeah. that yeah. routine where I'm at. Um, and I usually found that when I was away, I was better come back to Germany and be like, yeah, I can't be bothered training. And uh, yeah, so um, really I did mostly running, um, like body weight, fitness, calisthenics. And then I think I was in Poland, I think, maybe two or a month before, two months before this. Yeah. And that's probably where I got the most mileage in. And that was on an indoor bike. Right, and I was okay. on the bike consistently every day and I thought I felt good yeah, like, yeah. I felt fit I wasn't getting fatigued anything like that so I was like right it's brilliant I'm smashing it like let me just go back I've got an another month I'm going to be in Belgium and then I'm going back to Germany for two weeks I'm going to smash it out or to Belgium that was would have been the start of the rosy started as well so Ramazan started then yeah 
uh, I don't know what it was, got to Belgium, the hotel was uh, wasn't ideal in terms of location for a gym, prices for a gym in Belgium were through, through. <coughs> prices were sky high just for a day. Well that's the difficult part of having facilities around you when you're away. Yeah, and then, um, and I'm saving up for the cycle so I don't want to be spending £15 a day in the gym. I think that's all just to recover. And that was, so yeah, even the last month before the cycle, I didn't really get much in. I got what, that one cycle when I picked the bike up. Yeah, yeah. It's like an hour long. So what I found effective, especially for training wise, I've done this on my previous challenges as well, is that it is quite difficult to go outdoors and not say commit to spending two, three, maybe four hours outdoors on the saddle. I would try and do one hour three to four times a week on the exercise bike but it would be high resistance so you're powering away and um, set yourself sprints throughout that hour and it's difficult when you start off but slowly your legs do get conditioned and when then you do go outdoors you've got all this power stored in your legs and conditioning um, and it makes a phenomenal amount of uh, difference just from doing outdoor cycles. Um, it's like that high, high power trainer. Yeah, yeah, and surprisingly, it works really well uh, on with the endurance cycling long distance, because you're never going to put push out that high resistance constantly outdoors. So, how were your uh, thoughts before the ride? Say a day before, two days before, the morning of the ride. How, how so, was the morning of the ride, alhamdulillah, felt good. I was uh, calm. Collected. Um, it was quite emotional just seeing the family off and overwhelming when the, the, the local communities coming out showing their support. When we started planning this, it was just me and Rihan wanting to do our Hajj, go on the cycle. Uh, it was just a dream of ours. It was just us working together and our family were like, no, you are crazy. Why are you just going like this? Just catch a flight. You know, you have got a death wish all this sort of negativity so to be honest I stopped actually sharing the story my dream of you know uh, wanting to cycle and planning for Hajj yeah, we, we just, just kept it within ourselves we just kept it towards ourselves because there's just too much negativity um, it was only positive when we would speak to each other about it and yeah. speak to each other and plan about the cycle but planning it for over a year speaking about it speaking to each other about it and then eventually booking the Hajj, managing to secure the package that's when really it dawns on you you're, you're taking time out for three months and you're going to be cycling are we undermining this is a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a really big task is this something that we've been naive about it's also a case of it's, um, it's hard to train for something when you're not concrete we don't we didn't know yeah. the package was <clears throat> set until what three weeks before yeah. possibly. Yeah. Um and even in the planning it was difficult to the amount of hurdles that came up. Yeah in terms throughout, of throughout the planning, the route the planning, having to change the route and just uh, having these hurdles where me personally I, I there was a few times where I thought this isn't gonna happen, this just seems yeah. too difficult yeah. Yeah. to make it happen the way we want to go. Yeah. Yeah. That we might have to skip a chunk of the journey, in if we want, but it's like we didn't want to do it that way. Yeah, yeah, we so, wanted um, to keep it as as much as the land route as possible. But um, yeah, coming coming up to the the say, say like the last four weeks, it was a lot of nerves, uh, anxiety, excitement. Um, yeah, so so it was a mixture of emotions, not just negative emotions as well. And it came to the point where I just wanted to get the cycle started because once once you actually start the the cycle, that's when you really start just focusing on on progression and inshallah, Allah, Allah get us there safe and sound and you know inshallah. make it easy for us because I'm sure we will come across some difficulties, some difficulties, and some really dark thoughts in our own minds and inshallah it's, it's going to be a it's going to be a test of the mind as well. Yeah. See. Um, it was the last week leading up to it, but it was all. I started having dreams in the, right. the cycle, and because it was just on my mind. Yeah. I had so much stuff to square away that was just like constantly on my mind. I'd clocked out of work, even the guys at work, and yeah, you're not even here. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was just full on. 
just at work really the last couple of days before we left um, and then the day before done I messed up with uh, training with a little yeah, bit yeah yeah Hamza you um, don't train I woke up in the morning on Saturday after what 46 hours being awake had four hours kick yeah and he wakes up and I see him and he's like, how oh, are you off to? He's like, oh, I'm off to the gym and I'm like, all right, good, because he's not been in shape for a long time. Yeah. yeah. And he's training now and he's doing really well, mashallah. Yeah. And um, I was like, let me train with the guy. Like, it's nice to want to train with him. Um, yeah, and then he gave me a calf workout and they buckled my calves. I couldn't walk properly. So like that night before, I was, I was close to tears. I was like, how am I going to do this? Yeah, like, yeah. Like man, it's gonna be a tough cycle with sixty miles, and like I can't even walk properly. Which, but then, like we said before on the phone, I was like I'm really, really looking forward to get out of the comfort of life and get into struggle. Yeah, hundred percent. But then I was thinking in the bed, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm already at the struggle. <laughs> I was like, like, this is it, day one. I'm gonna be tucked right in the deep end. But, well, we we managed to do it. We got it done at the end of the day, but. Yeah. The first day was a rough day. The well. first day was rough. Yeah, the first day was rough. Um, and before we went as well, the community turnout that was um, overwhelming. It was beautiful. Yeah. It, was, it was really, really nice. <clears throat> yeah, but day, day one was um, tough. Yeah, it was a challenge. It yeah. was a challenge. But like again, the conditioning, Alhamdulillah, with with the indoor cycling, fitness wise, it was fine. It was just challenging was with the conditions. The weather, the, the, the weather, weather can make or break the cycle. 100%. Yeah, the weather was ruthless that day. What was it? Just really windy, ice cold winds. Yeah, wet. wet. It was really cold rain as well. To it the was, point, it was like bone chilling. It was getting like you yeah. couldn't feel your muscles even working. You're like, yeah. mate, this is bad. Um, and then we were just soaked, and we were at high elevation as well. So it's like you're coming you, down you were, yeah. and you're you, you were just open to the elements because yeah. we were that high up. But Alhamdulillah, that's that's in the past now, we move on. Aye, and then what, what's your uh, thoughts on the, all the support online? SubhanAllah. Never did I imagine to receive this much support. Because like I said, me and Rihan, we just planned we, we just planned to fulfill our Hajj bicycle. We, we didn't have any intention to... We wanted to document it for ourselves, but we didn't have any intention to, you know, Make push it, it push it this big, um, but with the recent uh, events unfolding in Gaza, it, it made sense, you know, um, that uh, yeah, it's not every it's, day we're going to do something like this, and it's no. a journey of a lifetime for us. And I think for a lot of people, it's going to be interesting to see how we are on this journey and how we yeah, get on, yeah. But so anyway, so we decided to do an appeal for Gaza and raise money for them and the amount of support that we've received, um, it's just unbelievable. Uh, online, our local community, especially online, the online's just been next level. Yeah. Uh, we're just blessed. Yeah, and big shout out to World Care, World Care Foundation who we're working with. They've yeah. supported us in a lot of our um, endeavours um, before. Yeah. Yeah, and providing that platform to be able to, you know, take part in this charity work. Yeah, and raise money for those less fortunate. They they were so supportive. Of them. Right. So then, um, day two. How were you before the cycle? Any niggles? Any pains? Um, day two was fine. Alhamdulillah. Aye. Alhamdulillah. Um, it was just, it was just trying to get warmed up after day one. That was the only concern. It was just a shock to the system being that cold. So on the night of day one, it was just a matter of, you know, warm. shower, layer up, try and stay warm and get the body to comfortable temperatures again. And then it was a good night rest. No, I agree with well, you. I don't get much of sleep, but it was, it was still good to get the body back to normal temperature, yeah. start off again. And Alhamdulillah, day two was dry. The weather wasn't bad. The roads were a bit tedious, up and down, up and down, but other than that, it was actually not bad. It took us through some, like it was different terrain. We went yeah, some yeah. <clears throat> muddy patches. We had, had an off-road track and then it was, it was getting quite messy there. But and, and even the, we were going through suburbs and whatnot, and the national cycle route was all, all over the place. So yeah, yeah. 
But I mean, uh, that's part of the experience. I mixed it up rather than yeah. just cycling on one road. That's part of the adventure, you can yeah. say. But I'm looking forward to Amsterdam today, yeah. inshallah, when we arrive, because it's going to be only a thousand feet elevation over 52 miles. And, and a thousand feet decline as well. Yeah. So it's, it's literally should be flat. Yeah. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Hopefully the weather is going to be nice. We've not actually yeah. looked outside yeah. yet. We're still on the ferry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully um, today will be a nice, easy jaunt. Inshallah. We first, need, we, first, yeah. yeah. First, we need to find a bike shop. Get get our uh, tire pressures to the right, uh, right. psi. Right. Psi. And try and get our bikes cleaned. Purchase from... some more tubes. We had two yeah. punctures yesterday. Yeah. One after the other. <laughs> so yeah. But this, these are the eventualities. It's like we can leave. Yeah, yeah. And we can be held up by just we can have a puncture, and next thing you know, five minutes later, you can have another one. Yeah. Um. I don't think the the luggage helps much that we're carrying. No. Nah. Because it's a, it's an extra twenty kg we put on on the bikes. Yeah. And. Yeah, that will take its toll. Have you noticed any difference in your cycling style with <clears> the luggage? It took me a wee while to get used to used to the handling. When we set off, my, my handling it, it my handling wasn't great, mm -hmm. um, and as as the miles racked up, I've gotten used to the weight and being able to handle it, standing up, sitting down, taking corners, taking yeah. so. It's it's took a, it's took a bit of time to get used to it, but alhamdulillah, by the end of yesterday, I was really comfortable with yeah, the luggage. Yeah, yeah. It's just when you're off the bike, just trying to maneuver the bike with all that weight on it. It's, uh, it's heavy. It's, it's heavy it's, at the it's, back. It's, it's really back heavy. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't have the back brake on when you're trying to jump on the bike, the bike will just like roll or the front wheel will lift. So it takes a bit of getting used to handling it. Yeah. I often actually just cut that.